hello. If you found this video, it's because you are like me and you are an Elizabeth Zimmerman aficionado and you haven't been able to find anything on YouTube or barely just a few things on YouTube to, you know, to satisfy your curiosity about seeing her on video. Imagine how amazing it would be if she were still alive today and that we could and that we could see her on a podcast. What a dream that would be. But I do want to talk to you. Alas, that's not the case. But I do I want to talk about Elizabeth Zimmerman and my favorite book by Elizabeth Zimmerman, The Opinionated Knitter. In my opinion, this is um, a must-have book for anyone who loves to knit. This is a book where, this is, you know, I know a lot of knitters today have not been kind of raised up with Elizabeth Zimmerman. Somehow she crossed my path when my youngest was in Waldorf and I had first learned to knit. Um, so I heard her name mentioned a few times and I was like intrigued and so at that time you could buy DVDs of her, um, of, of her, some of her knitting, her, of her old series. And so I did that and I watched it and then I ended up buying books, but this was how I learned to knit. This was really literally how, and I felt, I, it feels like a beloved grandmother taught me how to knit. And what I love about um, Elizabeth, not only just the fact that she teaches you what is known as the Elizabeth's percentage, the EPS, the Elizabeth percentage system, which empowers you to create a, any sweater that you choose in your size so that it fits you and you can design it yourself. And um, it's a super empowering way of knitting. She was just such an amazing, um, you know, she was this, this amazing matriarch who was, you know, this, she was doing this stuff in like the 1960s. You know, knitting was not something that was uh, trendy or cool by any stretch. And this is, you know, pre-feminism. This is when women were really kind of, um, you know, this is like the late 50s, early 60s. Women were home raising their children and they didn't have many options in terms of what to do with themselves as far as a career. And here she does, here she goes and builds this cottage industry, you know, um, really on, you know, on a shoestring and creates, you know, enough of a name and a success for herself and follows her passion and keeps on putting her knits out there in, um, you know, gets her knit, her, her patterns picked up by Vogue. You know, but they, of course, change it to a different kind of, you know, flat knitting, which she was, you know, very much a strong advocate of in the round knitting, which, of course, today is how most of us prefer to knit. But back then it was, you know, you, not, you knit things in flat pieces. Um, and, you know, she just built this name for herself over time and had a television show and traveled the country on her motorcycle with her husband, the back of her husband's motorcycle, um, you know, she was just such an amazing, amazing character. And um, she's, to me, she's so inspirational. I love, I really just feel, I have such, so much love in my heart for her. Um, and this book was really where I learned to first knit. And, you know, I just want to show you, this is my, one of my favorite sweaters. I still have never knit it because I just don't think that, that, particular type of sweater is really something that I would wear but it is so gorgeous it is just so beautiful and elegant and this is her her granddaughter I believe modeling it and there's so many gorgeous knits in this book and in here you know the other thing that's amazing is all these beautiful charts that she gives you right there's there's charts so you can create your own um, your own sweaters, but here's the schematic. Here's the here's the here's how it works, you know. And if you have the measurement around, you know, around the center of the chest, you can build a sweater in any way that you choose. So it's really, and she even gives you. Here's some more beautiful. Look at these gorgeous, gorgeous color work examples. They're so beautiful. I don't know if you can see that with the light. Here's some more sweaters. 
um, but you can, you know, you don't have to do a yoke sweater. Here's the actual, I showed you the wrong thing. This is the actual schematic. And, um, you know, it was really revolutionary for the time. This was not something that people did. Um, but she gives you a schematic. To, here's another page full of charts. I mean, this book is so worth whatever it's, whatever you pay for this book, it's completely worth it because you have, you have charts, you have here, she shows you how to make um, a sweater, a boat neck sweater, a V-neck sweater, a drop sleeve, a raglan. She shows you everything. Basically, when you read this book or you have this book, you can, you can pretty much do any kind of sweater and, um, which has really just been amazing. I'll show you the sweater that I made, the first sweater that I ever made. And um, it was using the Elizabeth percentage system. And I had, my gauge was off, so it's gonna be gigantic. But you know what, I still wear this sweater because you know, in the, it's, it's over, I like my sweaters oversized. I love this, color. the color work is just, you know, that was perfect, that came out perfect. Um, you know, the sleeves, there's color work on the sleeves, on the, on the bottom. It's just this sweater, I have so much love for it and it's, you know, Shetland and it's soft and it's, you know, well, Shetland's a little itchy, but, um, but it's warm and it's just, I have so much love for it because it was my first one and it's, a, you know, it's a functional sweater. I can put this on with, you know, over, um, over any kind of collared shirt and I am warm and toasty and I always get comments. I still get, you know, many compliments on that sweater even though it's very oversized for me. And so for a long time, I that's how I knit sweaters. Um, I also just, you know, based on some charts that she had, um, I made, here's, you know, another example of her charts and this is also in Shetland. I love this cowl, I love it. I just think it's so, so beautiful. And you know, now that we're in Vermont, this is actually something that I will wear, although today it's 70 degrees and it's October. Um, but I just love it. I love, you know, that I could do this. And um, you know, there was a time when this was like a really big deal. So I feel like she's so empowering. She's such an empowering um, teacher. And we all need that, right? We need, if we want to do something, if we want to learn how to do something, we need someone who's going to believe in us and show us the right way. And here's some flubs, you know, like here's, I have kind of had a problem adjusting to pattern knitting. Here's, an, here's a Marie Wallen knit that I, you can see, I, I tried to adjust it and I messed up the neck. The neck just got crazy. Um, so, there's a downside. So I'm going to tell you all the good things that I think about Elizabeth Zimmerman's book, her books, and um, and then I'm going to tell you, you know, really I only have one criticism, and that is um, that she only does bottom-up knitting, and I do prefer top-down sweaters, although you can absolutely um, just take her her pat, you know, the percentage system and turn it on its head and, and do it in a top down fashion. So it's absolutely possible to do that. Um, as I said earlier, one of, you know, there's the, like the myth of Elizabeth Zimmerman and this is, this book is just so filled with so much of that. We see pictures of her, of her children, of her grandchildren, you know, um, her friends who happen to also be great knitters. Uh, you know, so many cute, really fun and fun and like classic, classic in the back here. We have some real classic, if I can find it without turning the book. We have some real, these are like some, you know, really sweet baby clothes. But this is like real classic Elizabeth Zimmerman, right? This like baby surprise jacket, you know, this modular kind of knit. Um, that was super modern for like the 1970s, like really, really very, very modern and very sweet pictures of her grandchildren. Um, and so I love the stories. She and her husband take camping trips, ski trips, fishing trips. You know, she talks about gardening. I mean, she was living the lifestyle of, um, home, you know, this homesteading lifestyle in Wisconsin and um, 
you know, Schoolhouse Press still exists. I buy my yarn as often as I can from them. And what is really, really wonderful is if you make a pattern, an Elizabeth Zimmerman pattern, and you purchase your yarn through them, you can call and like you might talk to Meg Swanson, Elizabeth's daughter, who is so lovely and so wonderful. So I'm not being paid to like promote <laughs> Elizabeth Zimmerman. I'm just saying she has been the most helpful um, guiding light in my knitting. Um, and I recommend, you know, anyone who has any interest, I would recommend this book first and foremost. I would really, really recommend this to anyone who's new or anyone who's an old time knitter who just wants to become more empowered and learn more about the schematics and more learn more about design and get your hands on some really beautiful charts to create beautiful color work, I would highly recommend it. So love that. And I just wanted to share also what I'm currently working on. Uh, I'm working on the Birkin. I finally am doing a Birkin. And um, of course it's, you know, top down. So this is the upside down. I'm using some beautiful Falkland wool that I got at the local knitting store here in Manchester at Knit One Pearl One. But I love it. I love, it's like a variegated yellow. And uh, the gray is really, it's very, very soft. It would, you know, the block, the, um, the swatch that I knit up is, you know, when I washed it, it's so soft. And it's, there's no itch to this wool. Um, and I love how it's falling. And I've had some time lately, so I've really kind of been pushing through and getting this thing done. I'm in my almost, I'm in the last like five rows of color work, and then I'm gonna start the body and the sleeves and putting it together. So it'll be really interesting to see. This is, um, I've been wanting to do this knit for a long time. Um, I love Caitlin Hunter's, you know, I love her, her, her patterns. They're easy to follow. They are clear. Um, you know, I love, what I love about this and the reason that I've wanted to do it for so long is because I like the length of, I like a deep yoke. You know, I really like that. And I think the next project I'm going to do is, um, is a swan show that also has a really, really deep yoke. I love that. I think it's really pretty. If there is some sort of complaint I have about the traditional Fair Isle sweater is that the yoke is too short and it kind of just looks like a, a braid, which is also very pretty. But um, I love when it comes down and kind of hugs the shoulders and, and covers the entire uh, the entire upper body in like a drapey fabric. I really, really like that. So um, it'll be interesting to see how that how that comes out when I'm finished with it. Um, I'll share it. Um, so, you know, aside from, from this, and then I'm planning on designing my first sweater, which uh, I won't really be the total designer. I'm kind of using Elizabeth's percentage system and I'm going to make a, um, a boat neck uh, across, you know, something more fitted with a tighter sleeve and uh, kind of like a, a looser fitting bottom, which it sounds bizarre. <laughs> it sounds bizarre when you talk about these things, but um, you know, maybe I'll, I'll come in here with some drawings of it or some, some more details at a later date. But right now I'm just in planning stages and I'm loving getting into the cooler weather. I'm looking forward to doing knitting, knitting, knitting this winter. And um, I hope that you are staying well, and I hope that you're staying warm, and I hope that you have lots of fun knitting projects going.